continuing with embedded systems and circuit design, programming, and verification from 1982 till now. He is the main creator of Estero. The main creator of Estro Synchronous Reactive Language Implementation and Toolset from 2001 to 2009. Gerard acted as chief scientist of the Estero Technology Company that delivers languages and tools for safety critical embedded systems developments. In 2012, he became, became full professor at Collège de France, the most prestigious teaching and research institution in the French-speaking world, where he previously held two yearly chairs in 2007 and 8 and 2009 and 10. He continues working with INRIA, in particular on distributed web programming and web services orchestration. And the title of his talk today is Hop and Hip Hop Multi-Tier Web Orchestration. Thank you. Uh, very happy to be here. And uh, because I like Bhubaneshwa, I spent two uh, ten day holidays to hear the book here. And I come often to India in, and if you are interested in Indian photography, there will have a site on Indian photography for Indian imagination that you can uh, see on the web. Uh, I also would like you to, you, to use my, uh, my mail address, which is not here, but you find me on the web as well. Uh, because I would like to inquire a little bit uh, to know more about the role of women in computer science education, especially, uh, which is a big problem in France, seems to be better in India, so not yet perfect. But please, if you have information, give them to me. We are interested to know more in France. Okay, so I will talk about uh, distributed programming for the web. So the web, uh, the web has changed a lot, and these two photographs are well known, but I think they are still useful. This is the election of the Pope in, uh, in uh, 205, of the Benoit XVI Pope. This is the, the Saint Pierre place in Rome, San Pedro, where the Pope is announced. So this is 205, when the, the Pope was announced. And this is 203, uh, 2013, when the Pope was, uh, was announced. So here you see one cell phone. It's not a, yeah, it's a cell phone, it's not a smartphone. And here you see only smartphone. And all the things are on the web. So that's a big change, but there will be many more changes to come, in particular with the Internet of Things, and we talked about that. Yesterday, the industrial session talked about that. There will be many more things on the Internet, but there is something that people never say, is that programming this thing will be awfully difficult. It's all about programming the web still, and it will be very difficult. And the quality of a program on the web is very bad. I think the quality of other, other smartphone applications is much worse than one that ever existed before in computing. So we need to do something. We need to improve that. Um, the web is a strange space. It's a completely Darwinian technology space. It, there is a lot of technologies that came in from the beginning, caused only by needs and partial solutions and half-baked solutions sometimes, well-organized solutions sometimes, but mostly ad hoc solution promoted very far. And I put a lot of names here, and this is what you have to know somehow when you want to do web programming right now. It's not reasonable. It doesn't exist in any other part of programming. But it's like that. So there are things, but the problem is complex. Of course, you need to transport data, you need to display data, and now display can be very smart, uh, and data or music and so on. You need to write programs, which is new. The web are not meant to write programs. And you need navigators. And maybe you know now that a navigator is on the order of magnitude of 10 million lines of code. A navigator like Chrome or, or uh, Firefox is in millions of lines of code. It's not a simple program as it used to be. So this is all complicated. So we need to do something. And I put it both face things that, that change the way the, work work, the web works. And I will explain that a little bit. So the initial web, the primitive web, was quite simple. You have clients, which will be always purple here, and server, which will be always blue. And uh, the idea was using the HTTP transport protocol, you, you, you put a request into the server, and the server is just waiting for requests and responding. That's all that it does. And the server replies by an HTML page that you put on the screen. That was, that was the way. And then you can go to another server, maybe, and get another page, completely independently. So that's the first way. 
and that you turn out to be so useful that people want to make it a little bigger. And uh, you know, here, as far as programming, the only program is the server, and maybe the displayer, the navigator, but it was very primitive. Uh, with the web, when the zero later on, uh, you start chatting with the server. Because the server in the initial web has no memory. The server still has no memory, but you added something on the web. We added something that with the, the HTML page you, uh, you, you find, you can insert a little piece of code or data, depending on how you look at it, which is a cookie, in which you introduce memory in the system. So next time, and the server can do other things than uh, answering. The server can do calculation, motion, and then discussing using the cookie, you can get more results. And so that's new because uh, because now you can have a real program in the server. It's not answering questions only. The server has become a real program for you. Then uh, there was a big difficulty uh, showing that the web is ad hoc and that problems are not necessarily well understood is to make sense out of the back button. When you did back, all sorts of things may happen, like having something paid by your Visa card where it was the wrong thing and so on. It took a lot of time and it took the, the understanding that this problem was not in functional programming to find uh, to make sense of the back button. Uh, that was the main transaction. So in the web 2.0, it's a little bit better because now we have more power because with, with the page shipped back by the client, this page can contain code written in JavaScript, typically. And that's very new because now the client is very active. It's a, it's a full-fledged program somehow that can do things and can discuss with other servers. And also the display has become much more incremental. It means that you can embed into your display locally you can organize your display differently. And that's very important because now you can play with dynamic pages, dynamic computation, and you have really distributed programming coming in. The program is distributed between the servers and the clients. And now, soon will be coming, it is coming, the web of things, the internet of things. And you know, the internet of things, people think of computer, computers, smartphones, and so on. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about cars, airplanes, coffee makers, things that will remain as before. Coffee makers will not change. You will not buy a fancy coffee maker. You will buy a stupid uh, coffee maker, but it will be on the way uh, for good reasons. And that will be completely different. And, uh, and you have, will have distributed programs everywhere. So everybody tells that, but everybody forgets one thing. Nobody knows how to write distributed programs that work. Now, it's a big problem. Okay, web programming is too difficult because you have lots of technologies and languages to master. And all these languages are sort of not completely well-baked. Uh, fundamental programming difficulty. Distributed programming is hard by essence. Thread-based programming is worse. It's probably the, the most difficult way to program ever invented these threads. And, but we still have to use them because we don't know how to do much better. Because you have non-deterministic, then log, it's very hard to debug, and so on. Only beginners think that threads are easy. Uh, handling event by event handlers, as is done on the web, is difficult. And orchestrating a synchronous activity is problematic. And that will be my goal. What does it mean, orchestrating? Well, the web is full of services. Services are programs that do something for you. Not necessarily computer web pages, they can compute data or whatever. And, and because I'm lazy as a programmer, I want to use these services. I don't want to develop new things. For example, uh, Manuel Serrano, my co-author from INRIA, uh, in a demo at Collège de France, showed how to display the tweets in real time, the tweets sent in Paris, by showing them on the map of Paris where they are sent from. And this program in the technology I will show you is 29th of code. That's what we want. 20 lines of code to do something is good. 200 mess of code, 200 lines of mess of code, or 200,000 lines is not good. It will not scale. So that's what I want to do. So we will do that. We can do that with two technology, a single programming framework, which is called HOP, which will be in black and maybe in blue when I want to stress something in HOP, and a HOP embedded orchestration domain-specific language called HIP-HOP, that has other origin, in particular in the SLN languages, 
we developed since very long is the 80s, but to do circuits and embedded systems. Completely different paradigm. Okay, so let's start with HOP. What is HOP? HOP is a single language for all web programming You don't need to know 25 languages, okay? It's a full algorithmic language. It has the full power of algorithmic language, and of one of the most powerful of them, which is Kim, well known. It may disorient you in the beginning, but uh, HOP will certainly be soon ported to JavaScript, which is not a particularly elegant language, but it is the language of the web right now. HOP embeds HTML and make, it turns it into a true programming language, in fact, as multi-threading. Multi-tire single code. Multi-tire is very important. That's new. HOP is unique for that. I will show you. Uh, you can build client code on the server and ship it to the server automatically. And that's very important for distributed programming because you will have a single code for distributed systems. Uh, data communication is made completely automatic and you can uh, define and use web services, which is what the web is about. So it's all integrated in there. So let's see an example of how it works. This example is stupid and simple. You, you, have, you want to draw three buttons, and when you click uh, on one of these buttons, it will print the value of Fibonacci of this number. Okay, that's something for beginners. Um, and maybe you, you wait to do it with four buttons or 10 buttons, okay? That, uh, not for beginners, it's for post-beginners. So we want to do that. So it's known how to do this in HTML, that's the way to do it. Uh, you define a document with some uh, source uh, code out of it, and you say, here you say, I import the JavaScript code for Fibonacci, it's already written by somebody, I don't care, and then I make a table with three rows, and uh, in this row I put a number here, one, two, three, and I put a, a piece of JavaScript code by one click here and say, when, uh, when I click on this button, then you, you execute this piece of JavaScript code that will print you the result. That looks fine, except that it's very verbose, but uh, HTML is very verbose, as well known. And okay, it's not really a program. What is it? It's a document, it's called a document, it's not really a program. So can we improve on that? The answer is yes. So this is your first hop program, the program hop code. So it's not very different, except that I put HTML in blue here, eh? because now these things are, are becoming functions, function calls. HTML is a function, head is a function, but it's a function in the hop language. And uh, instead of having slash HTML, I put the thing in between parentheses. This is scheme syntax, like this syntax. This is a function, and these are the arguments. Okay. So here what I say is the HTML has a head and a body, and the body has a table of three rows. I didn't do very much, except that I put that inside the functional language. So let's now do things. The first thing we want to do, to do is to say there is a big difference between the HTML here and the, the, the whole program and the HTML. This is a program, it's not a document. It's a program that will be run on the server. But this action has to be done on the client. So I put this tilde here, this red tilde here, to say, beware, this is client code. This is multi-tire programming. You have server code and client code is the same source. And this mark here said, compile it and ship it to the client. And that's entirely automatic. OK, good. So it's just a little bit better, but not much, because we know that we, have, we will have more power. Let's use this power. Uh, the first thing we can do is to define a service. A service is what? Is a thing like uh, called Fibonacci 3, okay? It's put in a module that's for structure programming. So this says ship the code of Fib, the JavaScript code of Fib to the client. That's special. Define a service here, and this is a program in the service. The service will uh, go on the server, and when the service will be called, it will ship, the, no, when it compiles, it ships this code to the client automatically. And when, uh, how do you call it? You call it this way, by a URL. So a program is a URL, uh, as in the web, and uh, it's very easy to do, to define services. Good, now look at that. This is, this is really stupid programming. The worst you can do in programming is to use cut and paste. Cut and paste is good for surgery, but not for programming, okay? Uh, so here you, you write three times the same thing, and you make three mistakes, probably, when doing that. 
So what you can do is to say, oh, I have a, now I have a full-fledged programming language. So I can define a new tag. So it's a sort of uh, defining a new function here, which will take a parameter i, and I will use this tag with a 1, 2, 3. Normal idea is programming. So the tag is like that, but there is one addition here. Is that, remember, this is a server program. Uh, but this, this uh, purple code is a client code. It will be shipped to the client. And the variable i is in the server. It's blue. So you need to put a dollar to say, I want this variable to be imported into the client. So multi-tier programming is saying, here I go to client code, but whoops, I need the server value. And this is all that you have to need, and the compiler takes care of the rest. And the execution shift and everything. So once you have defined your new tag, your program becomes much more simple because you can apply this new tag to one, two, three. So now HTML has become an extendable language. You can extend it as you wish. That's very good, but it's not very good yet because this is stupid. This is cut and paste programming. It's lightweight surgery, but it's cut and paste programming. So we have a functional language, so we can use something better. We can do math. Uh, that say map the function tr field on the list one two three. This is absolutely standard programming in functional languages, and that's cool. But that's not finished because we still have one two three, which is not uh, which is a stupid thing to write as well. And uh, in functional programming, you have ways to generate one two three instead of writing them. You say yota three one, which is a list of three elements, consecutive integers starting from one. So this is the real program you want to write, and here everything is written only once, no cut and paste. A program can be correct only if anything is written only once. That's a basic property of programming. We shall see uh, at work later on as well. So that's the problem. But here we have a simple web scheme where the page is computed on the server and shipped on the client for it being executed on the client. But we still have one program. But I could do it differently. I could say, on the normal, uh, 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 on the normal way, I could uh, first I could I would say I want this parameterize this with n. And since I build a service, a server service, I can do it differently. I can compute because I can compute on the client. I could compute the web page on the client and not the, the just to change. And what the what the the server will do? I know here. Sorry, here, here, uh, here. I just uh, sorry, mistake, make mistake. Here I just added one argument to the service to build the list. And because I have this yota now, I can build the list dynamically. And how do I call this service? I say n equals ten as an argument in the in the URL. That's standard. So now I can do to a list of arbitrary length which would have been a, a much bigger problem with HTML. And what I can do here is to say, I don't want to build a web page on the client, on the server. I want to build the web page on the client. I can do that, that exactly in the same way, because the same language is available both on the client and on the server, which is not quite true with JavaScript. And uh, I can say here, this, this uh, server here will give this list one, one, two, one, it will, it will enum give this enumeration simply as a list. And on the client code, I say, call this service, call this service, this service is a, the client code is built on, still on the, on the server, so I need this dollar to say, call this service, which is called Fibonacci this two on the server, and with argument eight, and then build this, uh, this table on that. So you can choose to program the way you like, you can program on the server, on the client, and it, it makes minor changes to the code. Essentially, putting this diacritic or not, tells you whether the code is on the server or on the, the, the client. So that's cool. Um, but uh, now, now, we know the, we need to be more, we, we, we essentially, uh, yeah, you essentially want to, to build complex applications. This is a trivial application using only one service. We need to build complex applications using a lot of services, completely different services, not prepared to work together. Like, for example, putting the tweets in real time on the map of Paris, uh, on the place where they, they were sent, 
you need to have a Google map, you need to import the map from Google, you need to import the, uh, the, the tweets from Twitter, you need to geolocate them, uh, you need to know how to put something on the map, and for this, that is the all the code is already on the web. You just need to call it, to understand it, and to call it. Another thing, uh, by now, the, app, the telephone apps are completely different for Android or uh, iPhone. How stupid can they get that be? In Hop, you have exactly the same apps for Android or iPhone. Exactly the same, no difference, because they work with your navigator. They don't work uh, in any uh, private way. But uh, they should uh, use as well your car, your coffee maker, and so on. But for that, there is a new thing that comes in, is that we have, you have to endow events. Events that come from everywhere. When you call a service, uh, you ship an event to the service with some value, and uh, the, maybe the server never replies. Or maybe you, when you get a timeout event, or maybe the, repl the server replies with some value, or maybe the re server replies with some error. And if you deal with, a, with a, 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 a lot of services, the message we get the most often is error. Because the basic behavior of the web is that it works whenever it can. But it can also fail very often. And you have to handle that. So that's very different. And you also uh, need to handle data streams, like audio and video. And that's something we don't know how to do now. Some other languages are working on that, and uh, we don't know how to mix the technology. This is a, a, a real, for example, Orc has been, uh, by this and company has been uh, done for that. Good. Here is an example. It's called Hop FM. It's a little music player, which is available in the Hop site. Hop site is uh, uh, Inria Hop. Uh, Inria.fr Hop. Uh, okay, this player is very simple. I'm lazy, I told you. Uh, in the way we should be lazy. So what I want to say is I type, uh, at first I choose a genre, like jazz or Indian music or whatever. Karnatic or Hindustani, or, uh, depends on your... And your, your, uh, here I chose jazz. And then I type, uh, I type in the name of a musician, like Paul Flaherty or Miles Davis. And I hit return, and I want this thing to play music taken from a reasonable uh, number of random places on the web, and also to look for the biography, to look for the picture, to look for, for everything, to look for details on the tracks that are played, and that can come from lots of sites. Also to look at friends of this musician, for example, if you take Miles Davis, you should get John Coltrane, because they play a lot together, and they are excellent. And, and so I look for friends, and maybe at some point switch to friends, and I want to listen to my music and do nothing, okay? And I want to program this and do very little as well. That's the deal. So here you have to handle all sorts of events. You have to handle mouse events in the GUI, that's client side. You have to do the keyboard events, that's server side. No, that's client side, but sorry, that's how, yeah. You have a network events that can be client side or server side. And you have a player events. This is very weird. If you know how a player works, well, it doesn't quite work, actually. For example, in Chromium, there is a famous bug I will show you how to, to correct it, that Chromium forgets uh, very often to send end when the play is finished. So it's a problem when you really want to do an application. And you have a hot server, because in hot you can generate software events that will be handled, your, your software event, you choose them, that will be handled exactly the same as network events, uh, house events, etc. To handle events, there is a lot of work already done, especially in France, and uh, I use, uh, we use here the work done on SRL, which is also a work that has been done quite a lot of, uh, in India, we will show you that. So SRL was about reactive programming, which is uh, embedded systems programming, and also circuit design and programming, and uh, it is industrial, there is a company called SRL Technology, and nowadays, whenever you will find an air, uh, fly an airplane and soon uh, go to your, uh, any train, they, will, they are done with this. For example, the Airbus uh, A380 is done entirely with this kind of technology, and the Rafale fighter is done entirely, uh, was done uh, very much with SRL. So, what is it? SRL is about understanding events. So what is an event? OO, event and time. Event and time are the same thing. 
la slot trigger. They are the same thing. And here is an example. You, you, you want to, to do some training here during the winter, during the summer it's a little hot. And you need to go to, uh, to this track, to this stadium, and you need to, to do some training in the morning. I want to specify your training. So what are the events? What are the time units you play with? And then there is second. Second is an obvious event. Well, obvious. We can call it an obvious event. Then you have hour, for example, which is a derivative of second. And then you have a morning, which is a strange derivative of second. Hour is regular, morning is irregular. But morning is an obvious event. Uh, then you have matter. Matter and second are not different. For example, you can say run for 10 seconds, or you can say run for 10 meters. Same thing. And for meter, you can derive laps, because the laps is 400 meters, say. And uh, you have steps. You can also say run for 10 steps. This is the same as uh, the 10 meter. And you have hard beats. Okay, you can also, uh, it's harder to count, but you can also say run for 1,000 hard beats about that. But uh, your, your watch can count it. And you have strokes, heart attacks, which are the absence of heartbeats. So that these are less desirable. And so all these events are homogeneous. And S7 is about programming them in a homogeneous way, with primitives that are not available in programming languages. No programming language is able to talk about time, and no programming language is about to talk about events, to talk reasonably. For example, events in Java, you know, uh, look at what it means to, or in JavaScript, look at what it means, it's not trivial at all. So we should make that trivial. So here is the thing you should do uh, to keep in a good shape. So the first, uh, the first thing is run slowly. So slowly is a piece of behavior, programming SRL, can be complicated, I don't give details, it's modular language. And run is, it's a joke, it's a keyword in SRL that say execute this behavior. So this behavior is run slowly. This behavior is infinite. So you have to bound it. And you say, abort, run slowly, 100 meter. It's a watchdog. OK? So this is called preemption. And that's the main primitive. You don't have in programming languages. Uh, or you have fake preemptions. But abort, run slowly, 100 meter. Semicolon, which is sequence. Then, abort after 15 seconds, which you can read during 15 seconds, every step, jump and breathe in parallel. So we have to be careful about what it means to do parallel. Parallel is synchronous. These two things see the same events at the same time. It's not trading, not at all. It's synchronous deterministic. When you run, you are a deterministic person, even if you do things in parallel. So this lasts 100 meters plus 15 seconds, and after that, you go full speed. How long? Well, you do that every lap. Loop each lap, say you start doing that, and whenever you end the lap, you start again the same thing. Good. So when do you do that? When you stop that after four laps. Okay? And when do you do that? Every morning. So that's an SRL program. That's the, the number one SRL program, okay? Uh, you can try to do, write that in Java, JavaScript, C, and so on. Uh, come back in one week, okay? And what is the meaning of this? The meaning is very simple. You make an hypothesis, which is called the synchrony hypothesis, which looks stupid at first glance, but it's not. You say, oh, to give a meaning to this program, the best way is to say that my execution machine is an infinitely fast computer. What takes time is only what is written to take time. About 100 meter takes 100 meter. Semicolon takes no time. So this is exactly 100 meters plus 15 seconds. The only time is consumed by, by the environment, not by you. It's infinitely fast administration, an Indian dream, and a French dream. OK, and that, that makes sense, and we have all the mathematics uh, of that. And of course, this problem is a little bit dangerous, so you need to add uh, precaution, because here, this is very, very uh, exhausting. So you have to monitor your heart. And you add an exit point here, trap heart attack in, and you see there, there is parallelism. Huh? And uh, if you have a problem, in no time, in zero time, you stop all this thing and you rush to hospital. Okay, so the semantics is this program means exactly what you wrote. 
Good. Uh, the language is powerful. I'll show you that. This is a very, very common thing. Uh, this, this scheme, for example, I have C inputs A, D, R, and one output O. Think of A as uh, R is, uh, I, I, I am given a new artist name. A is I want the music of this artist. B is I want the picture of this artist. And assume the behavior I wanted, I start playing, which is O, whenever I get both the music and the picture. That's one possible behavior. All the, the other behavior can be coded as it is. So that's the way it's usually done. You write a kind of state machine where you say, if I get the music and then the picture, I can start. If I get the picture and then get the music, I can start. Maybe I can get together the picture and the music, because they are on the same site, for example. Then I can start. And this is a really bad program. Why? Because it's not linear. Look, here, O, A, B, R are written exactly once. Here, you have four R's, three A's, three B's, three O's, cut and paste. Real bad. Aha, uh -huh. how do you write that in SRL? Linear. You say, well, you wait for A and B in parallel, and the meaning of this is this terminates when A comes, this terminates when B comes, and this terminates when both terminate. So this terminates when the last and B of A and B comes. And then in no time you have it O, so in the same cycle if you want. And you abort that when R. And you start again. So that's in the R code. And you see the difference is big. Assume you wait for three things instead of two. If you make a state machine, aha, you need a cube. Four, you need a 16 two to the end. Esterel, so it's exponential explosion, okay? SRA, well, you just add one line, and that's it. So that's fundamental. If you want, if you start making state machines, you are ready to accept your programs to be exponential in the size of the problem. Not really interesting. How does that work in practice? Well, it's a, it's a very well-known thing. It's called cycle-based synchrony. Uh, you have a four-stroke engine. The four-stroke engine says, I have a waiting time, then I read the input. For, for example, in an airplane, if you fly an airplane, which is done exactly with this technology, except that the program is a little bigger, uh, uh, you have this four-stroke engine. Wait is, uh, the, the program is executed every one hundredth of a second. It's one hundredth of a second in an airplane. And then you, you read the input, which have been sampled during this uh, wait. Computer, you compute what to do and generate the output. And you make cycle like that. So synchronous means within the same cycle. And this is well known. This is the standard way to implement control theory algorithms in computer science. What we did with others, uh, in, uh, with Nicolas Alvax and Caspi and uh, uh, other people in, in France and elsewhere, uh, what we did is make the nice mathematics in that to, uh, to transform it for engineering practice to a really solid thing. Good. What is it good? Why? Because you wrote a concurrent program, but there is no thread. Concurrency disappears. It's compiled away. Uh, you have lots of ways to do that. Books on that. No threads. It's completely deterministic. And that's fine, because you want your program to be deterministic. The non-deterministic comes from the environment. You don't choose when the event com come in. But you want, for example, when you drive your car, you want your car, the road is not deterministic, but your car should be. When you press uh, the, the brake pedal, you want your car to stop. Huh? You don't want your car, your car to say, oh, maybe I stop, maybe I don't stop. No, no. Uh, same for orchestration. Same, for example, uh, when a uh, conductor drives an orchestra, want the orchestra to be pretty deterministic. Good. So in practice, what is done with this kind of language? I mentioned avionics. Uh, uh, SRL Technology, the company uh, that, that developed this kind of technology, and all, I'd say, all the modern airplanes are, are done with it, being Chinese, uh, Brazilian, uh, French, and now American as well. Trains, robotics, telecom, simulation, uh, circuit design, we did a lot of circuit design in India, actually, uh, verification, music composition, which is another orchestration program. Now people use this kind of language to do music composition. Good. To see, to show you that it has to do with India, actually the same, most, most of the, the, the major progress in semantics was done in India when I was working at TIFR and also with TCS. And this is, this is the program I showed you into a, uh, an electronic circuit. In fact, out of SRM we make an electronic circuit that where 
uniformly better than what human did, because humans are not able to make electronic circuits, essentially. And you see, this is the quasi structural translation. But what is important is that the theory of the circuit, the mathematics of the circuit, is as follows. There are three kinds of wires, creation wires, preservation wires, and destruction wires. And so these wires are nicknamed Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva internally in the, in the circuit, uh, in the theory. And uh, it's very interesting because there is another problem which has to do with it. And it was found this way. It's by, it's by thinking of that that we found the, the semantics, which is quite interesting. And, and there is also a strange phenomenon in, uh, in SRN is that because of uh, the, the zero utility, you can execute the same instruction several times in the same instant, which we call reincarnation. So here, for example, this, this uh, statement can be uh, executed three times in the same instance. And the main theorem of the theory of SRL is that at any instant, the number of reincarnation is finite. OK? It's sufficiently tame in, uh, right now, uh, but you can go, we can go farther. So this is not a joke, because this is the thinking of this that the way we will find the semantics. OK, so what about hip hop? Hip hop is an embedding of SRL into hop, but much richer than the original SRL. So, we give a unified vision of event handling, GUI, uh, service events, uh, network events, uh, temporal events, uh, hot events, and so on. And basically, we define how to orchestrate all these events. No threats, no synchronization problems, deterministic behavior, unless you want it to be deterministic. You can, you can introduce non deterministic yourself. It's not introduced by somebody else. Good. But more than that, the web is entirely dynamic. dynamic. SRL was meant to be static because uh, essentially uh, airplanes don't grow wings in flight. Uh, well, the web it grows things in flight all the time. So we, we need to, uh, the orchestra changes all the time. So we need to be dynamic. But that was made easy because the hop is a functional language. So let's look at event handling, for example, in JavaScript. In JavaScript, what you do is you, you add an event listener, which is a piece of code that you call. Uh, here, you can do the same in front, the same as JavaScript, yeah? That is, when you receive this event, this function is called. So, an event occurs, function is called, control returns to the mainstream, and so on. Good. There is an interference risk here. That's why it's complicated. You can call a listener while the listener is called. Uh, navigators have a very precise rule that nobody understands to avoid that, uh, and so on. In the synchronous approach, you do it differently. An event handler is something very simple. It just samples, pops, fills the memory, puts a token here, that's all. And if there is a value, like uh, here, 9, uh, 1947, pops, it's put it in. Essentially, the, the thing does nothing, does it automatically. And then at some point, you decide to react. And you decide to react, you choose when, not the system, you choose when to react, and then, these things are put into the reactive code, and the reaction is performed, and then you go back. This is a force work engine. Okay? This is waiting and writing input. This is reacting. Ah, oh, it still works. Wonderful. Uh, so, <coughs> how do we do that in, uh, in uh, hip hop? First, we use the power of hop, which is an operator language. So, we define the class of events. And we need some more syntax than in SRL. For example, now E is a predicate, a hop predicate that tells you E is, is now there. And uh, previous, it, takes, it was there at previous cycle. And you know that you can do all control theory with these two things. And uh, the events can also carry values. So this is the value now and the value at previous cycle. Good. Uh, this is our role in hip hop. So you see, it's, it's just a, a syntactic change. Uh, you, you take the parenthesis side, and the brown parenthesis are saying this is a hip hop expression, and the black saying this is a hop expression. Here is true or false, and that's all. So it's a change in syntax so far. Uh, here is the variant of Amo, for example. After first R uh, and every subsequent uh, R, emit O as soon as A, B, R, R, or right, but you terminate right away if you occur, if you receive same simultaneously. It's a variant. You also have a variant of the thing. And you say, very good, every time I get uh, R, and this every starts only after the first R, then you wait now, uh, you wait for A and B in parallel, then you emit O, 
and you say, if I have both at the same time, I exit, done, and the whole program finishes. And again, if you try to do that with, uh, with your uh, current language, you won't. So this is the kernel of, uh, of uh, hip hop. It's exactly the kernel of SRL. So there is a lot of publication about this kernel. The mathematics is very well understood. Compiling is very well understood. I won't detail that, detail that here. But the point is that these are, in fact, hop expressions that will build the abstract tree, abstract syntax tree of hip hop program which will be computed. That this is the embedding. This is called deep embedding of a language into another language. Good. You can define statements out of this. In SRL it was done, for example, wait for some event can be defined from the primitive. In SRL we say, uh, we say this is the sort of primitive uh, derivation and if you read the meaning. We don't need to do that in, uh, in uh, hip hop because we, we have hope we can program it. For example, sustain an event is, is basically keep emitting this event. Every cycle you emit this event and you say, you don't need to, to add the statement by hand, you, you can program it, you say it's a loop of an emit and a put. So all the derived statements that were sort of built in the SL compiler can be programmed now. That's good. For example, and you have all the power of functional languages. If you have a, a list of elements and you want to, to wait for the last of them, you wait for 10 elements, how do you do that? You say simply, uh, put in parallel the map of the functional weight on each of these event, events. And that's all. So this is the, the, the theory of functional programming. Good. So a weight class of ABC will macro generate, but it's not a macro. We generate this statement. It's not a macro, it's a clean function. Good. We can do more. For example, we can take data and dynamically build parallel out of this da uh, data, build processes. At each cycle of the stroke, of the, of the, uh, at each stroke of the cycle, you can change the program. You cannot change it while it is running, but you can change it in the wait state. And so that's very clear. Okay. Uh, let me, let me, okay. Uh, you, can, you can define signal and pad, uh, build emitters, receiver, build your program modularly, pass signals around, and they will really talk to the same guy. And so this is object-oriented programming as usual. Execution machine is very simple. Uh, how do you define, an, uh, uh, so, so essentially you change world when you go from hip hop, which is the classical world, from hop, which is the classical world of hip hop, which is the active world. You have to put the gateway, and the gateway in this execution machine, very similar to what I told you about event handling. Whoops. You say, instantiate a hip hop machine with this code, and then to give it input, you say, hip hop input, this machine, this event, hip hop input, this machine, this event, and then hip hop react. And then it will compute the, the orchestration step. And uh, you can simplify by saying hip hop input and react. Uh, if you want to react right away to an event. And, and uh, when, when the machine is sleeping, you may receive several events. So you have to know what, what to do. For example, if you are in a bus and you press stop list, only the first one matters. Okay, if uh, 20 people press stop list, it's the same. So you ignore all the other ones. Or maybe if you have uh, people here, uh, hit your door, talk, 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 maybe you want to count the talks. That's your problem. Okay, and the output is very simple. You define an event listener that you put on the output. It's a function which says what to do when this signal is emitted. I won't enter into detail. This is completely standard in reactive programming. Okay, so let me show you how, how the Hop FM music application works. Well, you say until we get the music stage signal with value stop or ended, that will stop the whole thing. Uh, stop will be a stop button. And ended will be all the music downloaded that we played, and there is no more friends, there is no more music, we are done. Uh, you do in parallel, pick a random playlist and uh, produce this uh, signal, manage your playlist, deal with new tracks, manage new artists. This is all parallel deterministic no threading. Uh, then uh, finding a random artist with music, uh, you define two, two local uh, events here, a local artist and local playlist. Uh, you call some, uh, some uh, service that will give you a local a random artist, uh, and then you try to get tracks of uh, this artist. 
this shamish reply, maybe they didn't find something, but if they found something, then it means that this variable is really a pair, otherwise it's not that they found something. And then you start playing, you start playing the, the artist. So that's a sequence of two service calls. And here is a more comple compa uh, complex specification. In, in English, the artist info component searches in parallel an image of the current artist, information, and a similar artist. It outputs bio, discography, similar, and playlist to one of the other components. So, trivial. Every time you get a new artist, you do the three requests in parallel. Again, no trading, deterministic. That's more interesting. I want to find a photograph of an artist, and I know several sites that can give me this photograph. So I launch requests to all of them, and when one of them uh, answers, I take the photograph and I kill the other request. Okay? Almost no code to do. What you say is say, uh, the code is here, uh, uh, the, the, this is the key part, try finding one image on two different servers, about the pending request as soon as one returns, and let's zoom on that. What you say is trap done, which will uh, give you a way to exit. Uh, call with hop means call a service. Call a service with uh, this service here, and return this image. This call will return this image. If you get an image, you're happy, you exit. And that will automatically kill the other one. Bookkeeping is done automatically, you have nothing to do. Same for the other side, the connest. If you find an image, kill the other one. So all the killing, all the, all the administration is done completely automatically and has a completely formal semantics. There is no, uh, by the way, the, for, the, uh, for the modern airplanes, I told you that uh, this kind of technology, not this one, case 6, which is very similar, different flavor, is used. The, the, the man, and, uh, and the compiler is certified at the highest level of avionics requirements, the 0178B level A. And uh, the documentation of the language is in mathematics. It's not in English. English comments documentation mathematics. So for the, just for the people who think that formal people, formal method don't exist in industry, that's not. <coughs> okay. Parallel search immediately terminate by exit as soon as one search return an image, because of these two exits. But maybe both searches return with no image. You also have to say that, to, to handle that, and then the, uh, you test if there is an image. Uh, just after the return, you know that in no time you get there. As soon as either one returns, you get an image. But if both return without image, then you know there is no image. So you, you, you can test that right away. And then you go to the else and you say, I don't know, there is no image or uh, some message. Good. This is a fix for the chromium bug. Chromium doesn't necessarily shape uh, uh, end of play signal. And uh, nobody knows why. Uh, this is a fix. It's not an easy fix to do with trading. You can try, it's not an easy fix here. You simply have two temporal loops. Essentially, you say each time the player is called until it stops or it or it's ended, because it may say ended sometimes. You do that, you watch, you watch. What you watch, you, you get the music. You look at the music duration. The music duration may be, may be uh, there only after the player starts to play. That's like that in players. So if the music direction, uh, duration is not there, you wait for 100, uh, say, milliseconds. OK? And you come back. And once you have found the music di uh, uh, duration, what you do is you do the faster loop. You wait for this duration. If the music is finished, you exit. And otherwise, you wait for 10 milliseconds. So you have two waiting loops, one slow one, and another fast one that said, uh, this is, the, this is the, to, to, to minimize access to resources. OK? I will, it can be more complicated if you want to, uh, to handle pause and so on, but that's the basic principle. So try to write that with your usual language, and you will see that it won't work that way. No thread, no event loop determinism. Okay, this, uh, this is the inner loop, and this is the thing that... Uh, so, basically, you emit yourself the signal that chromium should have emitted. 
and that makes no difference to her. So conclusion, the web has become the universal diffuse platform, and that's very interesting. It's a fabulous place to, to develop application, except for one thing, you can be confident in nothing. That's really new. But it's good, because you have a lot of things you cannot be confident of. That's the alternative to a very few things you can be confident of. Your choice. And uh, how greatly simplify and integrate web programming? Hope is completely available. It's a thing that is absolutely super solid. It's based on another skin system which has been widely... Uh, Hope is not a thing where you could expect to find bugs. You can download it. Uh, uh, Hip-hop is more, much more experimental now. Uh, it greatly simplifies the action to events. But uh, it's not yet finished by far. And there is a, a lot of room for more research in particular in handling something very important for orchestration, which is really streams, data streams, and we don't know how to do that. Uh, the, there is quite a lot of related work on reactive programming, if you are interested, and uh, quite a lot of people in India have been working on this subject, and published on this subject, and one of the main papers on SRL, called uh, SRL to Hardware, from SRL to Hardware, has been published in the Sadaran, the Journal of the Academy, uh, Academy of Sciences in India, and uh, I really liked it. And I worked a lot with uh, Shyam and uh, S. Ramesh, who are at IIT Mumbai, and also Tata Consultant Services, which has been a partner of SL Technologies and <coughs> many other. NTI India, Intel India, ST, ST Macroelectronics India, and, uh, which gave me a lot of occasion to visit your fabulous country. Thank you. Uh, very nice talk. Yeah, I have one question about the continuous time. Uh, because uh, when it comes to the cyber physical world or in athletics, at some point you want to model continuous change. Let's say we got in a very questions, for instance. And so my question is just how does it fit in this framework? Do you, have, do you need an extension for that? Or what is the status of uh, the well, models? I think in the, there are two different things. The, the web is about uh, signaling. Inside the objects, you have a lot of connection with control theory. This is called cyber physical time. We are working on that. That's another chapter of the work we are doing now. And it's very interesting because what is available now is not good. I mean, I, I could show you, uh, I can show you if you have time, examples where MATLAB does totally stupid and false things. A uh, totally trivial example of uh, what does MATLAB is not uh, real because MATLAB works with continuous time only, I mean simply works with continuous time only, and whenever there are discrete events, it gets lost because it handles discrete events by integration steps. And it's totally easy to put it in, uh, in a no-brainer state. And uh, we are working on that using the same kind of technology and, uh, and there are many papers by Marc Pouzet, for example, Albert Benvenis, on how to make sense of both continuous time and discrete time together. And that will be a seminar in my course this year. Uh, so all the courses I give at Collège de France are available on the web, uh, from, the, from my page or from the site of Collège de France, and translated in English. So that will, you get, we get the answer in March. But it's not a finished story, because it's a complicated story. Real time, you know, the only thing we know in, uh, in computer science is that the only numbers that don't exist are the real numbers. <coughs> and the physicists know that the only thing that exists is that the space is not continuous and time is not continuous. But uh, continuous is a good approximation of this. Uh, because and conversely, you, uh, you mentioned uh, the already existing applications of this novel in avionics, but in avionics uh, you need to have... Uh, no, 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 no. In avionics there are two different communities. There are the control theory people. The control theory people work with continuous time. And what they do is define a discretized version of their equations. And this is the input. So we don't have to handle our control theory when we do avionics. It's another job. Okay. What, we, what we do have to do is to show that the airplane program has no bugs. That's useful. 
How many people in this room would fly the airplane they have programmed themselves? <laughs> Very few. Okay, so you fly the, the you fly the airplanes we have programmed. <laughs> no, actually, we have written the compiler for. Uh, the, the airplane is really programmed not by programmers but by computer uh, by uh, uh, control theory people. Okay, and momento, Professor Gerard Perry. I would now request Professor N. Raja to please uh, to present the bouquet and the flower to the chair for the session, Dr. Elizabeth Buchanan.